by blowing the soul inside the flesh yes. and be and he will be. Yes. That soul, my dear brothers and sisters, before God put it in the flesh, he put it in a workshop and a process of called be prepared to be on earth by carrying something we call it the apparatus or the app or the calculator of morality. So every human being, according to our tradition, born with that calculator, with apparatus within it, called the apparatus of morality. Now what does it mean in real life? What is, does it mean in practicality? Meaning that any individual walking in the street and seeing somebody beating up some other person, one person shooting another person, somebody is really robbing or killing somebody else in the street. You don't have to be Muslim, you don't have to be Jewish, you don't have to be Christian or Baha'i or any other religion to find out that this is wrong. What is going on, it is wrong, and we have to stop it. That the moral apparatus within you will tell you that this is wrong, and the moral consciousness within you, regardless, will tell you that this is wrong. And if you see somebody bleeding in the street, you don't have to have a PhD in morality to find out Amen. that this man needs he help right away. Right. Now, teaching of our prophet telling us that in every individual born with that apparatus. And that when you are born in a certain family, the environment will affect that apparatus and the sensitivity of that a calculator within you and escalate whether you are uh, live in a moral in, in an environment that producing you and producing a some kind of hurdle and putting hurdle in front of you making that canvas of yours of morality becoming senseless more and more and more until you find yourself that campus of yours, morality campus within you, not sensitive anymore. What we call it right now, the transforming of the campus of morality of the individual to the campus of morality of the society. So the society will, campus of morality will be contained from aggregate soul and morality of all of us. So that the society Hey, what we are re live in right now, the campus is not sensing the right direction anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So our society campus need to be corrected, yeah. That's right. and the way to be corrected and redeemed need us as a leader of the community sitting, standing here with the giants of civil movement leaders in here. It is a, a it is a an honor. But not only an honor, but it's an opportunity to stretch my hand on behalf of the Muslim community and say, we want to work together to correct and redeem our campus and put it in the right direction so that we can distinguish and teach our boys and girls what's right and what's wrong. And this is the only solution. It's redeemable, it is doable, but it needs a lot of work and without me and you, as a leader, put our silly differences down. And put our silly differences away. I have eight children starting from doing the PhD until a student in PhD, IP program in PHS require from me as a parent to make a living, bring food to the table, but at the same time, find somebody who can put his hand with my hand to work for a better environment. At this time, we go on bring brother Elliot Bennett Ellison to introduce Pastor Matthews. But before he come up, I, I'd just like to say in my meeting 
with Ennis was a coincidence. And when I came to his office, who I meet, a pioneer that the migrated through generations of this type of stuff and had the opportunity to talk to him face to face, it meant a lot to me. And when I shook his hand, it's good to meet people that still here and can still talk about it. Amen. because I don't know what to say, because I feel the pain that these parents feel. Believe it or not, two of the names that was called today, I graduated two of those boys at SL John Christian Academy. I gave them their diploma so they can go out into the world and be productive citizens. My philosophy is this, that as a people, we must be proactive instead of being reactive. What comes to my mind is this, is what Jesus said to his followers. In Matthew 6.33, Jesus said to them, but you seek ye first the kingdom of God. The question is, what is the kingdom of God? The answer is the things of God, the reign of God, the rule of God, the sovereignty of God, Anything that dealing with righteousness, that's what we have to pursue. God has to be preeminent in our lives in order for us to be blessed by God. The Bible says, I shall have no other God before me. And what had happened to our children, our nation, our country is that we have like the children of Israel in the Old Testament, we have began to worship idol gods. And I stop out to tell you today that anything or anybody that we put before God is an idol. So Jesus said in Luke 9 23, he said, Listen, if any man, talking about woman, girl, girl, will follow me. You got to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. I say follow Christ. And that's the problem. That's the problem. What we got to do, because they, they were intermittent and in didn't prayer Can you just keep out of the school system. I gotta go to my car. And, and, and many of the hurry, we're not praying with our children. We're, we're not teaching our children about God, the Creator, and His Son, Jesus, who died, the Holy Spirit, who died. And that's the reason that we are in the condition that we are in. And we're going to continue to let down until, as the Bible says, if my people, in Second Chronicles 7, 14, God says, if my people, if my people, which is what? Humble themselves and pray. And then we got to do something else. You got to turn from your wicked ways. God said, then when I hear you from heaven, and I will forgive your sin, and I will heal the land. If you want God to heal the land, 
I encourage you as I take my seat to train up these children. I bet you have some up in the air. Train them up in the way that they should go. And the Bible says when they grow old, they will not depart. May God bless you is our prayer. Amen. I'm Ellison Bennett. I serve on the National Board of the National Movement for Civil and Human Rights. I come to introduce our National President, Reverend Dr. H.K. Matthews. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Bennett. Good evening to uh, to all of you. I am. Uh, I'm listening to these mothers. And you know, I refuse to believe nobody All right, now. can make me believe, believe it. that every black child who has been murdered in this city is in a gang All right. or selling drugs. Right, but that is what your share. Yes. 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 You know that fell out there. <laughs> that is what he would have you to believe. Every black person who's been murdered, the first thing, and he needs to just cut a tape, put it on there, and every time a black person is killed, first of all, if he's killed by law enforcement, he needs to have a tape that says justifiable homicide All right. because regardless of what happened in the killing, he is in the business of justifying law enforcement. Regardless of what happens otherwise, he is in the business of saying, oh, it was drug related. Or uh, they were in a gang. Well, I want him to come around here singing he was born by the river <laughs> in a little old tent. And I want to send him to that river. <laughs> I, I want to, first of all, my first order of business is to, where is Cindy? My first order of business is to thank her yes. for bringing this to the forefront. Yes. I had somebody say to me the other day, well, you know, Cindy is doing this and Cindy is doing that. I don't know why she's doing all of that. And my question to them was, have you ever lost a child? Yes. You don't know how you'll act if you lose a child to murder. And all of you mothers, it's a shame to say, are there many fathers around? Mm -hmm. Where are the fathers? Okay. Because I always say, you know, every man who produces a child is not necessarily a father. They are what you call a biological contributors <laughs> but I'm glad to be here and uh, I, I'm just going to read what I got because if I don't I'll be upset with myself when I took time to write it <laughs> but to Miss Cindy Martin and to all of you mothers who have lost children and to the members of the five men from Atlanta who came down here in 1974 and went
fishing as they had done year in and year out and all of a sudden they came up missing and nobody could ever find their bodies until one day when President Ralph Abernathy said that I'm going to Pensacola and we are going to launch our own investigation. And the day that Dr. Abernathy landed at the airport, Reverend Leverett, H.K. Matthews, Tyrone Brooks, and Bernard Lee met him. I mean, we met him, Reverend Leverett and I. Bernard and uh, Tyrone came with him. The day that he landed in Pensacola, bodies started washing up. One man, one of the members, one of the Atlanta Five, had on a pair of glasses that didn't hook behind his ear, just went straight across. And when his body washed up after all of them days, he still had his glasses on. How in the world could that happen? Somebody knows what happened. They had some man named Joe Sullivan who was out there on the water and said that he saw the men, told them that the waters were too choppy, the weather was too bad, they ought not go out in that weather. And at the time he claimed that he saw those men, there was no way that they could have gotten from Atlanta to Pensacola at the time he came because they checked out of their jobs at 5 o'clock in the afternoon in Atlanta. And Atlanta ain't 30 miles from here. But yet, you see, we have got to stop allowing people to pay us to sell us out.